and welcome to Violin with Paula. I'm Paula, this is Francesca my violin, and today we're joined by special guest Nutmeg. Welcome to week five of the Kreutzer Challenge, where we learn all 42 Kreutzer etudes and get in touch with our breath along the way, and maybe even hang out with some cute animals. Today I'm trying something a bit different. I'm sitting, you can't quite see it because of Nutmeg, but I'm sitting on a yoga bolster on the floor. So I'd encourage you to try a different posture today. If you've been sitting down, try standing up. If you've been standing up, Try sitting down, wherever posture you take. Start to become aware of your body, of your breath, of the feeling of whatever is connecting you to the floor. And if you have an animal, I encourage you to stroke it. Start to deepen your breath. whatever attentions you've experienced so far today be there if they want to go away they can if they want to stay that's also fine feeling yourself sink into the ground feeling the ground support you Feeling, ooh, perhaps a bit of a yawn. Feeling yourself stack your pelvis, your heart, your neck. I always know I'm in a good, good alignment because as soon as I get there, I take a very deep breath. If you're holding your violin, incorporate that into your posture as well. And when I say posture, I don't mean a sort of rigid, lost to stand up straight, but just an awareness of the way that your spine is stacked. And if maybe you didn't want to be here today, maybe you have lots of other very important things to do. Totally get that. There are days when I have no desire violin whatsoever and sometimes I do and sometimes I don't but I'm here today and I'm very grateful that you are here as well. So continuing to breathe deeply in. A nice way of coming into the present moment with your instrument is simply to admire your instrument. There's such beautiful beautiful pieces of art. Admire the colour workmanship. Mine has a really wonderful flame on the back. It's such a beautiful thing to look at. And it's nice to get reacquainted with oh, it's the feel of your instrument. How smooth the wood is. What the texture of the strings is like. If you're playing on gut strings, fantastic. I love playing on gut strings. And that has such a, a rough texture. Um, and then the wound strings are much smoother. And let's start, we're going to be playing in F, F major today, so let's just start with any note in an F major or indeed an F minor arpeggio. And just do long, long tones with the breath. Audible breath in. And breathe out. And in. Maybe incorporate some vibrato. If 
it's interesting to notice that when you use a really heavy vibrato, the, the position of the violin or the neck can change ever so slightly, otherwise the instrument wobbles too much. So let's carry on now with an F major scale. Let's do a two octave scale. And the bowing we're going to do is something like that. So two notes of equal, uh, well, equal length, but the first one is articulated, so it's a more tenuto. And then the second, so it's the same um, tempo and duration of each, each um, chunk of sound. It's interesting to think about how you'd notate this. So some composers might just write, in some periods, might just write two equal quavers or eight notes, if you remember. And some would notate it as maybe a quaver or an eighth note followed by a semiquaver or a sixteenth note. So it's um, part of knowing the composer's language is understanding when they've been really specific and when they've just said, oh, you'll, you'll understand the style. So let's do, as usual, a two octave F major scale. And we'll do it in thirds, so I'll start and then you join after two notes. And now let's do twice as fast with the left hand, so we'll do... And so on. So same again, I'll start and you come in after two notes. interesting thing when sitting on this bolster is if I lean over too far and come off balance it's a lot harder for me to fix that or at least I notice it much more than I do when I stand and I know from watching videos of myself when I stand playing that I, I tend to move all over the place which sometimes is fine but isn't necessarily always the right thing for my playing so it's quite interesting to notice the difference in in how I'm balanced sitting on this bolster okay so let's move on to Kreutzer 9 now I'm not going to lie this is not one of the more interesting Kreutzer etudes and we're not going to play it all the way through. Please do not try to play it all the way through at home because unless you're in really good shape, uh, which I am certainly not at the moment, uh, this is a recipe for injuring yourself. So we're going to focus on what I call section D. So I've divided it up. Every time there's a minim or as a half note, if you're in America, I have called a new section. So the first section doesn't have a letter. The next section, letter A, starts about one, two, three, four, five lines in in my piece. And section A is... So we're going to start at section D, which is the last section. It's the bit that starts. And so on. I think it's probably the trickiest section because um, you've got to do a different hand position and you cycle through a bunch of different positions. So what I'm going to do for you is play you a drone note. We're going to go slower. So the tempo you'll play at. You can do whatever you like with the bowing. You can do four notes per bow, you can do eight notes per bow, or you can do a whole, a whole bar per bow. And I'm going to play quavers or eighth notes. And someone like that. 
So you've got a drone to play with, but it's a drone with a bit of um, a bit of rhythm as well. Um, so let's play together. This is from what I call section D, which is the final section before the end. And I'm going to play the first of each group of notes. So enjoy. Three and go. And there you go. So I encourage you to try other bits of this etude, but only do them in small bits. Don't try to play the whole thing through. It's a great one to do with a, a tuner, and you can also mess around with the patterns. So instead of you could try a it's great for fourth finger strength, but just again be careful not to overdo it. So thanks so much for joining me and Francesco and Nutmeg, who is sleeping, you can't see her at the moment. Um, for this week. Do join us again next week and if you enjoyed this a lot please like uh, the video, subscribe to the channel and share it with a friend. Thanks so much and see you next week. Bye!